Okay, so I have a couple students who are trying to put together some sort of fan blade or a turbine blade and kind of curious uh, about an approach. So here's an approach you might try. So we start with the center cylinder, which is going to be the center where the fan blades are going to be, where the turbine blades are going to be. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a loft. We're going to create a feature loft initially and maybe a surface loft after that. But uh, what we want to do is we want to have very you know, simple geometry. I think uh, fan blades are fairly simple. Uh, at least the sketch geometry might be. We're going to try to simplify it. But actually the result of it might be uh, rather complicated. But uh, this approach will probably show you how to do that. So we're going to have two, uh, in regard to simplicity, we're just going to have two profiles. We're going to have a profile on the very, uh, very beginning on, uh, on the right plane. Then we're going to have a right plane number one on the outside. We're going to sketch two profiles in these and then we're going to go ahead and do, do a lot between them. Because they're just two profiles and they're going to have square edges to them, we don't need guide curves, so that simplifies it too. But the uh, sketch itself is going to be a little bit complicated. So let's go ahead and take a look at our blade loft uh, feature here. Now let's take a look at the two uh, different profiles that we have. So we have our profile uh, uh, number one, our feature profile, and you can see we have a lot of stuff down here, but some of this has to do with surfacing too, so we're going to cover that in a bit. So we actually have two different configurations in here. We have a feature loft, and we have a surface loft in here, and we're going to be covering the feature loft first. So very simply, our first uh, profile is on the inside. If we go normal to that and take a look at that, you're thinking, oh my god, that looks complicated, but not really. If we uh, take a look at that, um, our Saros mechanism and uh, this sort of profile that we created with the Saros mechanism, where we sketch everything out as a single line, and then we offset that line on either side and close the ends of it, that's all this really is. Defined by this dimension here in the bottom, from the bottom to uh, that point over here, which is going to be the center of that offset. There's a quarter inch dimension over here, it kind of defines where that point's going to be. Then up here, uh, we have another item up here. We have a one inch uh, dimension from the very top, which defines that point. And then we have a straight line in here, kind of a center line in here, which uh, kind of connects both endpoints. We could do that in the center too if you want to do that. But I put it on the edge because it's a little bit easier to see. What we did is we threw in an uh, angle dimension in there between that center line and the middle and uh, where that line is and that defines that. So you might want to have it a little bit you know more of an angle on the inside it might uh, help the fan to operate a little bit better so that way all the you know the material has a tendency to kind of distribute itself down the fan blade instead of being like a centrifuge and pushing all that material whether it be water or air or whatnot you know, towards the outside. So then we added a thickness to it so it's not too complicated but I'll cover that here in just a moment. And so there's a fan blade as it goes from uh, profile one to profile two. And let's go ahead and take a look at our profile two. And this is uh, done in a very similar manner. Three inch offset from that center line here. And it's probably good to do the center line here because it can, you know, it's always going to be there. And we got to define, uh, you know, the very width of the blade too by uh, putting in a value like that from the center line rather than from the edge. And then uh, one inch from the bottom, so you probably want to make sure that everything's contained within the cylinder that's starting with. And then we have three quarters of an inch up here is a kind of a different dimension. And of course, you know, done the same way. We have a center line here connecting this end point over here at the end of the arc to that one over here. And then an angle dimension on that. And a thickness up here of a tenth of an inch. And we have a radius. We didn't talk about the radius, but that helps define it. So all those dimensions and uh, relationships that we have in here will define the two profiles for a loft. So once we have that in place, everything else is pretty simple. We're going to put a blade in here, uh, kind of a chamfer in here. I think one of the students wanted to have this so it had the capacity to chop a little bit. And it's also good for kids, you know, put a nice little sharp edge in that for kids if they ever get their hands in there. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill it on the inside in here. So we're going to get all this stuff into your, in here on one blade before we do a circular pattern. And finally we do a circular pattern around that. And then we have that. So kind of looks like a kind of a weird shape in here with these sharp edges. I uh, finish this off by putting in a cut in here. So I have a very simple uh, sketch number seven in here, which is a simple circle, 15 uh, inches in diameter, and I just cut to the outside of that. And what that did is it kind of trimmed the blades up a little bit. It also uh, created some nice rounded edges to your fan blades, which will allow you to effectively enclose that inside of a cylindrical enclosure that you might want to create for your fan. 
So say you want to take your uh, profiles in here and maybe uh, make some uh, changes to them. So let's go ahead and take a look at our profile number two. And let's see what we, what we might be able to do with it. I think the desire here is probably get rid of some of the gaps in here, uh, some of the space in here. Maybe fill that in, not completely. But uh, you want to get some more fan blade out here and probably less fan blade here. I think uh, the you know here in the inside is probably okay. In the outside, we could probably do a little bit better with that. So let's go ahead and take our uh, profile feature number two. Let's go ahead and edit that sketch and take a look what we have. So we want to make that a little bit bigger. So instead of uh, three inches, you might want to uh, consider maybe three and a half inches. That kind of spreads that out a little bit. And maybe with that angle in here, maybe make that a little bit shallower, maybe 110 inches or 110 degrees. So that's a little bit too much. Maybe 115 would be better. And let's go ahead and take a look, a look at that before we leave this, just to make sure it's uh, within the confines of our uh, envelope, or kind of our virtual envelope here. Still want to make sure it's an inch off the bottom, three quarters of an inch off the top, and I think that's probably a pretty good extent on that size. So if we go ahead and rebuild that and see what we get, and then from the top you can see it fills in quite a bit. So again, you can make uh, modifications to these two profiles once you get them in there. I like the idea of having an angle because, uh, again, here in the, in the center of this, if you have a much steeper angle in here, uh, you have a tendency to kind of draw some of the substance towards the center instead of throwing it all out towards the edge. Okay, so as an alternative to that, I created uh, two different configurations of this. Uh, we have our default configuration. It's got everything in it. Uh, I typically like to have that in there, but we had a feature loft. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what a surface loft will do. One advantage with the surface loft is it gives us the capacity to actually create a loft in here simply by using simple lines, simply by using uh, simple model lines and arcs. So if we're to take a look at our profile number one and take a look at that, it's a much simple, you know, much more simple uh, sketch in here. We just have a, an arc in here with, uh, you know, that line in here, that center line, and the angle in that line, and very similar dimensions that we had before. And so we're able to make a loft out of that, and uh, something very similar with a uh, second profile in here too. If we were to take the rollback bar and see how this thing progressed, what we did is we uh, created the surface loft in here. So it's a, you know, very simply just a surface, kind of like a line, an extension of a line. It has no thickness to it. And you know it's a uh, surface feature because it's got those light blue edges to it. And uh, you know, you're going to have to knit those light blue edges to something else or to get a solid model out of it, uh, you're going to have to make a thickness. You're going to provide a thickness feature to it, which is what we just did. So we pr uh, provided a blade thickness of a tenth of an inch in here. And what that is, it kind of incorporated that into the model, but it uh, didn't really incorporate that into the original feature in here. So what we have in here are two bodies. So we have two solid bodies. And to show you what we had before, if we were to take the rollback bar in here, now we have a solid body and a surface body. Surface body has no, it's, you know, it's got no thickness to it, it's got no volume to it, it's got a lot of area. And then we have our uh, solid body over here, which is a cylinder. And once we uh, go ahead and add that thickness to it, then we just get two solid bodies. So we have our uh, two different solid bodies, center cylinder in here, and our blade. So if we continue to add features in here, we want to put in a chamfer just like we did before. Put that chamfer in there, and then uh, we did a circular pattern. And now we have all these solid bodies in here. We have our center cylinder and then all seven blades that we created after that. So let's go ahead and take our rollback bar and roll that back some more. Uh, we're going to go ahead and combine that. So now we have a combined feature. So now it's beginning to get a little bit more complicated. So now we have this extra feature, this extra step in here, uh, step in here and we're going to have to combine that together. And uh, once we do that, now our solid bodies folder is done. We only have one solid body in here. So continuing to roll down, I went ahead and put in some fillets in here and we can't really add those fillets before we combine the bodies. We have to combine those bodies then put the fillets in and because the fillets are uh, you know, individual or specific to each one of these blades in here, we can't really do a uh, circular pattern in here. So now that adds even more complexity and more steps and more time. So this might not be an approach if you really want to put in uh, these fillets in here. You're going to might have to do that individually. Now, of course, at the very end, you know, just like we did before, we had these sharp edges in here. It's going to be hard to take that fan, uh, these fan blades in here, and actually put it inside of a cylinder. Um, 
but we're going to go ahead and trim that out just like we did before to put a nice round edge on the edge of the fan blades. So let's see how we can put together one of the sketches that would uh, define maybe our first or second profile of our feature loft. So if we do the sketch for the feature loft, the, the sketch for the surface loft is going to be a lot simpler. So if you get to uh, just sketch uh, you know, the design down for the feature loft, uh, the surface loft will come with that. So you should be able to do that if you learn one over the other. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to our configurations go back to our feature loft configuration go back to our feature manager and take a rollback bar and roll that above our base uh, feature loft so th this is kind of where you start and uh, we're going to go ahead and sketch our uh, original profile over here on uh, the right plane and then the second profile is going to be on the right plane number one over here so going to go, go ahead and choose the right plane go to sketch and then we're just going to go ahead and uh, make that normal too and we're going to begin to sketch this out so probably the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and do a three-point arc roughly below the origin over here and kind of go up in that direction with an orientation like that and what we want to do is we want to define this point here first define that point second so now let's go ahead and put in some uh, dimensions in here so between that point and the bottom we're going to make that uh, two inches and between this point and not that edge over here we want to go ahead and use uh, the center line in here and I don't think we have that center line in here so let's go ahead and do that we have our temporary axis in here but let's go ahead and sketch in a center line from the center of that cylinder on the top to the one on the bottom let's go ahead and sketch that out just to make sure we're not uh, selecting that center axis let's go ahead and turn that off and yeah hide show let's go ahead and draw that again and uh, maybe just regular axis too. I don't know why the regular axis was on, but if we go inside of that, uh, we have our temporary axis is over here, and then uh, the regular axis is over here. So maybe I just need to rebuild the model. But this way, kind of takes a little bit of the complication out of there. So let's go ahead and go between that point and uh, the center line here. We're going to make that a quarter of an inch, and then from the top, we're going to make this one uh, one inch. So we're going to start uh, real small. Now we're going to define that a little bit better. And then the radius of this is just going to be 5. So we're going to go ahead and put a radius in that. So not fully defined. What we want to do is we want to put in a line in here that we can actually do an angular dimension on. So we're going to connect the two endpoints of that arc and put a dimension between that line and this line. And we're going to make that 140 degrees. Once we do that, that gets it fully defined. So now what do we do? Well, now we're going to go ahead and take this line in here, right click on that, we're going to make uh, turn that into construction geometry, and we're going to go up here to offset entities, and we're going to make it a tenth of an inch wide, but we want to make that uh, bi-directional, and we don't want to add dimensions in here. What we want to do is we want to use uh, some sketch geometry in order to define this a little bit better. If we add dimensions, it's going to put a, like a 50 thousandths of an inch dimension on either side of that or 0.05 uh, inch dimension on either side of that and that's not as elegant as doing like a midpoint relationship on the end uh, the line that would define the end cap of uh, each one of these offsets so we're not going to add dimensions we're going to do the offset we're going to stick with a tenth of an inch and we're going to do bi-directional you want to make sure you do that and we're going to go ahead and click an outline now you can see what it's going to give us and we're going to right click on that and uh, get what we want here so it's still going to be asymmetrical about this. Oh, what happened to that? Control Z. Let's go ahead and bring that back. Let's go ahead and move that out a little bit. We can grab an endpoint in here. It's still going to be concentric. So we can exaggerate that a little bit if you want to pull that point out. And we're going to go ahead and uh, take a line in here and uh, just a regular straight model line. Uh, connect those two endpoints of those two arcs. Select the midpoint and the endpoint of that line, uh, that center line in here. And we're going to make that coincident. So we're going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect those two endpoints of those arcs with one line. Right click on that. Uh, I think if we just, uh, I think it's probably already going to have that in there. So let's go ahead and see that. So now it's kind of like a mirror relationship in a way. And I think all we have to do is to find uh, the length of that line, which is going to be a tenth of an inch. And I think it was trying to do a distance uh, dimension in there. But this one's going to be just going to be a tenth of an inch, so point 0.1. And now we have that enclosed geometry. So this line in here, 
I went in ahead and uh, I deleted that just to make uh, and just kind of throw that out again. It's going to make that underdefined. We're going to go ahead and reestablish that. I took it out of the middle here because it's just harder to select if we did that. I'm going to go ahead and bring that out to the end of, over here and redefine the endpoints of this arc in here with that line. But if we put in that uh, dimension in here, that angular dimension between those two, it's still going to be 140, de 140 degrees. So with that said, now we have our first profile. Okay, so that's our profile number one. And again, all these dimensions can be changed. I like the idea of having an angle dimension in there. So you could change the, the pitch of that blade if you wanted to do that. And it's a lot harder to do that if you had just like two other dimensions trying to drive that. So we're going to do something uh, similar to our second profile. So let's go ahead and go to our right plane number one. And let's go ahead and sketch in that too. So we'll go to sketch up here. We're going to do something very similar to the, that we did before. We're going to start with our three-point arc and kind of sketch that out in a similar manner. But this one's going to go a little bit further. It's going to go off the edge of our uh, object here a little bit. Off the edge of our cylinder. And now we're going to go ahead and define that. So we're going to make this uh, one inch from the bottom. So between those two points, we're going to make that uh, one inch, bring that up a little bit. Uh, right, let's go ahead and put a radius in that too. That's going to be about 20. That'll help uh, define this a little bit better. Woo. Boy, kind of got away from this there, but let's go ahead and bring that back a little bit closer, a little bit more reasonable. Uh, we're going to have uh, three and a half inches uh, here from that point to the center line here, which we haven't sketched in yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit too. I'm going to make sure that I'm picking up the edge of the cylinder rather than some of the geometry that we have in the background. So let's go ahead and do that. Between this point and that uh, center line, we're going to make that uh, 3.5. And then we're going to make, uh, we're going to put a, a, an angular dimension between that center line and a line that's going to go between these two endpoints. We're going to define that after we put in this 3 quarter of an inch dimension in here. So let's go ahead and put in that line. So we're going to connect uh, two endpoints of our uh, arc in here. And we're going to put a dimension of that uh, between that line and this line. We're going to make that 115 degrees. So that fully defines that. And just like we did before, we're going to take this uh, line in here. We're going to make that a center line by going up to this option up here. Construction geometry. We're going to make that construction geometry. We're going to go to offset entities. Uh, same values that we had before. We're not going to add dimensions for the same reasons. We're going to right click in that and we're going to take a, we're going to end cap this between that arc and this arc. Connect those together, kind of pull that out a little bit so we can uh, make sure that we're selecting the right thing. Select midpoint, that point. We're going to go ahead and make that coincident. Let's go ahead and put a uh, dimension on this of a tenth of an inch. So drop that into place. Point one. And then we're going to end cap this one down here too. And I think once we do that, it's going to be fully defined. So that should be black. Looks like uh, Sketch 9 is fully defined over there. And if we go to the green check mark, I'll go to Rebuild. Now we have our two profiles in place. So very simply, you know, now these uh, profiles are in place and they're independent sketches. If we go up to Features, Loft of Boss Space, we can go over here to our Feature Flyout. It's always a good idea to rename these, but for expediency, I didn't. We're going to go to Sketch 8, Sketch 9. We're going to make sure that our control points in here, our guide points in here, are in the right location. It looks like it's in the upper left-hand corner of that profile. So we don't get any twisting in there, and it looks like we are in pretty good shape. So no guide curves, very simple profiles in here. Now we have our fan blade, and that's how you put that together. So what that just demonstrated are what look like relatively complicated sketches in here. Uh, that we're using as two profiles for the future loft that we put together as a basis for our fan blade.